Welcome to Game of the Week for week number two in the OMFL. It is already season 70 and we are deep into this season. Just kidding, it's only week two, but it is our very first Game of the Week and we are going to go out of the box. D. Wayne, our champion, the Atlanta Falcons, is the guy who helps me pick our games and want to do something a little bit different. It's early. We wanted to try to highlight some teams that we felt like had a really good offseason. So, we're going with the Saints and the Browns in week number two. Both of these teams had a really good offseason. The Browns arguably had the best draft in the entire OMFL. And the Saints picked up their franchise quarterback to kind of move forward with and rebuild this team. Both of these guys are facing off in a very pivotal matchup with the Saints being 0-1. And the she Cleveland, excuse me, not Chicago, Cleveland Browns are 1-0. and Saints are 85 overall, and they have their rookie Tyler Mesco, who had a rough game in his first game in the OMFL. But Keith Marshall and Tevin Coleman are two very good running backs, and if they can get that offensive line figured out, they're going to play very, very well. Brandon Cooks, Dean Jett, Brad Pitta, these are all guys who are trying to catch balls from Mr. Tyler Mesco. Tyler is going to continue to play better and get better as he progresses on. We got to call out my co commission friend here. Uh, all these articles are my old articles, so maybe he's got to take some time to get something up there. But this Saints team really is all about that defense. They are playing better every single week, and as soon as they get their passing game figured out, they're going to be a much better team. Right now, the rankings aren't saying a whole lot. 31st in total yards, 30th in points, 25th in passing yards, and 32nd in rushing yards. Really abandoned the run and let things get away in week one. On defense, he's 11th in points, 18th in total yards, 20th in passing, and 15th in rushing. Again, though, I do like this roster, and I think that Chaotic will begin to turn his focus to really figuring out this offensive line and playing better with Collins and Armstead, you've got two guys right there that are locking things down. He brought in Weston Richburg, who's playing extremely well at 89 overall. He's just got to get the right side of that offense figured out. He did trade for Humphreys this week as a swing tackle or maybe even taking over as a guard in the inside at the right guard position. Tyler Mesco, like I said, is a rookie and will only continue to play better. Very good rushing game with some good receivers and good tight ends. The defense, though, is got a lot of youth and a lot of speed. Of course, I really like Seth Peterson, 24-year-old, 86 overall middle linebacker. Plays extremely well with his 86 speed, and he makes plays. And then they're really rebuilding things with the cornerbacks with Hayden and Battles back there. Bro is on the trading block. And then you got Von Bell, Forbes, McAfee, Vicaro, all these guys playing safety. Over with the Cleveland Browns, here's a team that really had a solid draft. There's some question marks at quarterback and possibly his offensive line, but that defense really was rebuilt during the draft, and he went out and got him a running back that he was super excited about. He is 10th in total points, 14th in total yards, 10th in passing yards, uh, 25th in rushing yards. On defense, he's 3rd in points, 3rd in total yards, 9th in passing, and 6th and rushing. Stubfield uh, played pretty well, 21 of 38 for 282 in his first game. Todd Garley, though, Garley only had 55 yards rushing total. Both Lone and Coleman uh, hauled in eight receptions. Um, Lone almost 100 yards, 98, and then Coleman had 154 with a touchdown. Again, though, I really like this team's defense. And if he can get things figured out with Gurley, he'll be a much better team. The offensive line has some holes in it and some serious question marks. Sooner or later, that team is going to have to start drafting and trading or free agents or something for this offensive line to really rebuild it. Quarterback has always been a question with this team. He's going with Nate Stubfield right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Tyler Bray does give him some playing time at some time during the season. Stubfield is playing better, though. And he possibly could win with him as a quarterback if he can get some kind of running game going. Ty Gurley is Ty Gurley and going to be a very good player. Dre Lone, Corey Coleman make up two pretty good wide receivers. Uh, Lone has a lot of size at 6'5 and some really decent speed and hands.
the defensive side of the ball is where this team really begins to shine. They really had a great draft in the offseason and brought in a lot of very good, athletic, fast linebackers with a lot of size and playmaking ability. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then they have rebuilt this cornerback situation. They are lacking some serious speed, but they do have some nice size with Kirkpatrick at 6'2 and some nice playmakers at safety. He brought in about a billion safeties. So sooner or later, they're going to find the right combination to stick back there. So the Browns and the Saints are going to face off this week. I think the Saints are actually taking to the road to face Cleveland. I'm going to go ahead and take the Saints to win this one. Giving the Saints in a 24-21 victory over the Cleveland Browns. I think that Stubfield is going to be picked off. But look for the rookie for the Saints to play much better this week. Both of these teams are going to play pretty good defense. Look for them to give up some great big plays in the passing game, but shut down each other's running game. The Saints cannot abandon that running game, and the Browns are going to have to stick to it to get more than 55 yards. So that is a look at our game of the week for week number two. We'd love to hear what you think. Subscribe and like to our channel, and we'll see you in week number three.